Kia ora, internet. This is Charlie. He's a rather elderly black lab belonging to a friend of mine, Sandra. A while back, Sandra asked me to make Charlie a coat because he's been feeling the cold a bit more as he gets older, so he's not enjoying his winter walks as much. I've never made a dog coat before, but how hard can it be? Right, the first step is going to be get some measurements. I'm not sure which bits of a dog are the important ones to measure, so I don't know, I'm going to measure body length, chest diameter, round his neck, it seems like a good start. Back home and I've downloaded what promises to be an easy coat pattern. Ah, it turns out I didn't quite measure the right bits, so I'll just have to guess some of them. I'm not going to follow this pattern exactly, but I'm going to use the dimensions they give, plus my guesstimates, to draw out the shape on a big piece of paper. That is a weird looking shape, but hopefully it will work. I'm going to use polar fleece for the inside of the coat so that it'll be nice and warm. The pattern I've drawn is for only one side of the coat of course, so I'll need to fold the fabric in half and lay the pattern along the fold line. This piece from my stash is a bit small, but I think I can patch it together to get enough. My original plan was to make the outer layer from patchwork, but then I found this denim in my stash. It's going to be much more weatherproof and durable than thin cotton, so I think it will make a better dog coat. And of course, I've got a layer of batting for extra coziness. I've put the three layers together, batting, then fleece, then denim, with the fleece and denim right sides together. And I'm sewing a seam around the outside, leaving a small gap for turning. So far it looks like some sort of weird baby jumpsuit. Or maybe a squashed frog? The next step is to turn under this opening and then top stitch around the edges to secure everything. Now I just need to add velcro strips to the neck and belly straps for fastening and in theory, with a bit of quilting to hold the layers together, this coat will be finished. It's a bit boring though, so I'm going to add some applique. Sandra is a big fan of the Canterbury rugby team, so in a nod to that, I think I'll add some spots in the team colours, red and black. That looks really good. But there's still quite a few unquilted areas, so I'm going to free motion quilt some more circles just to fill in the gaps. That's much better. Now to see if Charlie likes it. Come here. There, there we go. Oh, don't you look good, Charlie? You look really good, Charlie. Yes, you do. Well, that took a little longer than I planned, and it's nearly summer now, so Charlie won't need a coat for a few months, but he seemed quite comfortable wearing it. Sandra reported to me that he hadn't tried to shake it off by the time he got home, which is probably a pretty good sign. We'll have to wait till next winter and see how he likes it. Don't forget to do all those nice internet-y things like liking and subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Kakiteano internet.